Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. Both people who depend on and staff the St. Louis region's public transit system have seen significant changes in recent days. Yes, we're talking about Metro Reimagined, Metro Transit overhaul of its bus lines in Missouri. The new routes went into effect September 30th with the goal of increasing service on the busiest lines and decreasing wait times. So now that it's been a week and two days, how is this big change working out? We'll get to our guests in a moment, but first we do want to hear from you. What's been your experience? Experience of the Metro Reimagined bus system overhaul so far. Give us a call at 314-382-8255. That's 382-TALK. Or you can send us a tweet at STL on air or email us at talk at stlpublicradio.org. And joining us in studio to address whatever you have to say is a very good sport. That's Jessica Mefford Miller. She's the executive director of Metro Transit. She'll be talking to us today not just about the Metro Reimagined rollout, but hopefully a few other issues as well about public transit in the region. So Jessica, welcome back back to the show. Thanks for having me. We're also joined by DeAndre Braddix. He's a board member for Citizens of Modern Transit, as well as Associate Vice Provost for Student Affairs at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. DeAndre, welcome to the show. Thank you. And we're also joined by Mitch Eagles. He's a St. Louis resident, a frequent transit rider, and a vocal transit enthusiast. Mitch, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you so much. So Jessica Mefford-Miller, on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you with how this Metro Reimagined rollout went? Well, Sarah, it's a major change. And so our expectations for this service change are, of course, very different than they would be if it were a minor change. We have touched all of our Missouri Metro bus rollouts. It's the biggest change we've had in the system in more than 13 years. And so on a scale of 1 to 10, I, I'm at about a 7. There, okay. there are a lot of things that haven't gone well, uh, and we're learning. You know, we're, we're just over a weekend, so there are a lot of different data points that we're still collecting, customer experiences, monitoring running times, whether or not trips connect. I'm happy with the design of the plan. It certainly isn't flawless, but the concepts and the design I think is good and is solid. We're working to make some adjustments and tweaks to ensure that we're really delivering the service that our customers need. What do you think has been the biggest challenge just in this last week as this has um, hit the public? You know, I think it is providing mobility to people who are just outside of the service area or ensuring that customers are aware of their options because all of the routes, as I said, have changed. And so for us, that requires for us as consumers and transit riders, it requires some pretty big behavioral shifts. So if we were used to riding, you know, the 56 Kirkwood Webster, maybe you continue to ride that or maybe you need to consider the 21 Watson as a different option. And as humans, we really, our travel patterns really become ingrained in us and it's hard to shift. And so as we move through that, we're really encouraging customers to be sure that they're aware of all of their options. So Mm -hmm. give us a call in customer service at 231-2345. And we have staff standing by ready to support our customers and make sure that we're meeting their needs and explaining what that is. So I think that's the biggest piece. And then running times, this seems like a small thing, but it's really not. It affects people's livelihoods. Absolutely. And lives. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And so when you you create new routes, of course, we estimate how long it's going to take to get from point A to point B on all of the different times of day. But there's always a little bit of deviation from that plan. So we're responding to that right now. And you really do have to get at least four or five days under your belt before you can, and the operators are used to the route and the customers are used to the route before you can say, okay, here's how long it takes to get from here to there. So Mitch Eagles, you're a frequent transit rider, and I know you're a big supporter of the system. But on a scale of one to 10, would you be close to a seven on how things have gone? I'd say a seven is a pretty reasonable as far as the plan that we ended up with. Mm-hmm. I think that there's some aspects of the plan um, that are a little unfortunate. We lost a lot of east-west mobility, um, but that's not in the plan's execution. That's mm-hmm. in the planning of the plan. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand I heard a rumor that you did have a little trouble getting here today. Would I, you mind? I know you, you haven't volunteered <laughs> to talk about this, but tell us what happened. Well, I was just, uh, I worked downtown and I was planning to reasonably take the bus here for this. Uh, unfortunately, my 97 bus just never showed up and Ooh. the live arrival times were down. So I ended up taking a lift into the studio to talk about transit. Ugh. And and Jessica, I'm sure that hurts to hear. It um, does hurt. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And I don't know why that bus wasn't was late. We I know we had delays this morning on the 64 Lucas Hunt. We had one on the 11 Chippewa. 
uh, due to mechanical issues, but I, I don't know what happened okay. with the 97 Delmar, so I apologize for that, Mitch. No, I, I mean, it, it happens. I'm, I'm used to it. Yeah. And, you know, I guess it's unfortunate that you're used to it, but it is also this mm-hmm. huge system with so mm-hmm. many moving pieces. DeAndre Braddock, how are you feeling about this rollout at this point? So I have to say that uh, we were involved – in this process pretty early on and uh, participating in focus groups on behalf of the university. And, um, and that's, through UMSL, that's through UMSL, not Citizens for Yes, Modern that's Transit. absolutely correct. Thank you. Um, and I have to say that I, I understand fully why Metro has to reimagine or realign bus services just due to um, some of the routes not having the most utilization and with cost increasing, just needing to centralize those services. Um, I will say that we don't have a lot of people at the university that are directly affected by this, at least that have talked to me. But going to the Board of Commissioners meeting last week or the week prior, hearing the community feedback, it was disheartening. But I would agree that a 7 would probably be an appropriate score for how it's rolled out so far. So we have some some consensus from our guests. I like when that happens. (laughs) We're not one of those shows where we love when people come to fisticuffs. (laughs) Now, our producer went out and uh, talked to some people that were riding the buses on, I think, uh, Monday morning. And she spoke with Lisa Judson. She's a 48-year-old St. Louisan who's been riding Metro since she was a teenager. She told our producer that Metro Reimagined made significant changes to the route she depended on. That was the number 58 to get to work. I had to quit my job because my bus didn't go back down Clayton anymore. So I would have added like a 30-minute commute to my commute. So I had to find a different job. That's Lisa Judson. She's a longtime Metro Transit commuter who told us that she had to change jobs um, because of this overhaul. We also got a Facebook message from Richard who writes, My situation is dicey since as a result of Metro Transit decision to eliminate my bus route, I have lost both my full-time job as well as my part-time job. I was totally dependent on Metro Transit, and when they discontinued my access to public transportation, I lost my jobs. It's just that simple. Um, Jessica, what steps did Metro take to try to limit that type of, of story? Sure. There? So most of the service area that we covered before we're covering now. So in the case of Ms. Judson, I'm not sure exactly where on Clayton Road she was traveling. We did change our routes in Greater West County, which includes that area. But those markets still are being served by other routes. And so I would encourage her to give us a call in customer service and make sure she's aware of her trip plans. Now, And, for, and you can almost do like a concierge level where you'll right. help a person troubleshoot an individual route. Absolutely. Okay. Where are you going? What time? And we'll help you figure out how to get there. And then for the other customer who reported that he lost his jobs. I don't know what specific routes, but that that may well be true. There are some places where service isn't that it used to be. Oh, and some customers perhaps can't walk the nearest distance to the next bus. And so that's something that we're grappling with right now. We know that we as a region can't afford to operate 40-foot buses all day, every day, and all of the many different streets where people need mobility. So one of the things that we're working to do now is try and deliver other mobility solutions that help fill in that gap. In Fenton, for example, we're operating that fixed route with vans. It's a lower ridership market. We tried it in Hazelwood last week, and actually our ridership exceeded that capacity. So we've since shifted that route Hmm. to be served by Metro buses, full-size buses uh, today. And that started actually last week. So we made that pivot. We're also experimenting with Lyft, with a partnership program, just specifically in some of these geographic areas where service has gone away. That would allow us to help support customers trip to get them from perhaps their home or their employer to the nearest frequent service or the nearest transit center. Hmm. So we're doing a soft launch now with those customers and those markets where we've already talked to, and then we'll do a full rollout of that pilot program later this month. Okay. Our uh, our producer also talked to John Sharp. He's a Metro commuter who's been riding ever since he moved to St. Louis five years ago. We spoke with him on his commute earlier this week, and he gave us his observations on the rollout so far. Schedules and the destination points. They've either shortened them and you got to get off at another area, try to commute, catch a bus to another part of town. So it's been kind of hectic for some people. I don't go to many places, but when I do, I need to make sure I got the right schedule. Most of the time before I make a commute, I, I'll call the 231-2345 for the metro and find out the schedule, make sure the buses where they drop me off at, so that way I won't get turned around while I'm out and about. 
That's John Sharp. Um, and if you want to give us a call to discuss your experience, that's 314-382-8255. That's 382-TALK. Now, um, John also talked to our producer. Um, he said that his experience has been very good in terms of safety and security and that his experience on the vehicles is fine. He's disabled, though, and he mentioned there's not always a place to sit at bus stops, and sometimes he's been waiting a while. With everything else going on, Jessica, how big a priority is it to have an actual bench at the stop? So it is a priority, Sarah. So bus stops for most of our customers are the front door to the metro transit system. So it's very important. It's difficult to do, though. We have over 5,000 bus stops here in Missouri. Most of those stops are located in places where we don't own the property. So they're in the public right-of-way or they're on private property. So we've been working steadily for about 10 years now to make those bus stops accessible to persons with disabilities and to deploy benches and shelters where it's important. So we've created a set of standards for determining whether a bus you know, merits a bench and merits a shelter. We've also created a program called Adopt a Stop, where we're working with uh, philanthropic organizations, businesses, and property owners to help keep those stops clean and beautify them to alert us if signage is missing or damaged so that we can respond to that. So it's more eyes and ears out on the metro system and more community partners. Partnerships. So we put those benches and shelters out there as quickly as our funding, which is typically federal funding, allows. Okay. Uh, Mitch Eagles, how did your commute end up changing as a result of these uh, bus service changes? So it hasn't changed significantly. I live right next to one of the lines that became uh, a frequent line, actually. So, oh, rather, so you're one of the lucky ones. I am. I'm very, I feel very fortunate. Um, I am excited to see higher frequencies. Uh, that's the thing I hear from people. A lot of people I talk to really want to ride transit. They don't want to wait half an hour or an hour for their bus line uh, if they happen to miss it, because that means you could be late to work, you could lose your job. Um, and uh, so I, I'm excited. If I miss a bus now, I only have to wait 15 minutes. That's, That's something great. that was, yeah, never, nobody except the Grand Line in St. Louis could have before. Um, I want to see a lot more of that. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any money from the state, which is a big problem. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. We've got a couple callers who'd like to join this conversation. Um, let's talk to Basmin, and I got to apologize if I'm mispronouncing that name. Um, hi, you're on St. Louis on the Air. Yes, good afternoon, and it's Basmin, but many call me Basmin. Ah, well, um, thank you for that correct pronunciation. Um, what would you like to talk to us about? Um, I'm a, a native St. Louis, and I've had the blessing of living in the same uh, house for 60 years, north of Del Mar. Uh, unfortunately, and I do a lot of traveling where I'm able to utilize public transportation in other cities to get everywhere I need to go. As I just heard the other caller talking about uh, the problem of having long waits in between buses or in between trains trying to get where you are trying to go as a problem. Uh, sadly, I have found a historic neglect and devaluation of those of us that live on the north side who uh, have don't have transportation and Public transportation is the only way to get there. Mm -hmm. So the long waits in between buses, and it, it, sometimes you can't get to uh, your job an hour early or a half hour early, that if you miss a bus, you have missed your time to be at work. Basmeen, has your um, wait time increased with the changes uh, in Metro Reimagined, or does it just remain a, a problem that you weren't happy about even before this? Well, uh, it has kind of magnified the problem because I live where the last a streetcar route was at the 15 Hodemont on uh, May 21st, 66. It used to come right by my neighborhood and take me to a number of places. That is eradicated. That doesn't mm. exist anymore. I find that the 13 Union is uh, very infrequent. The, the uh, 95 seems to be more reliable going south than coming north. Um, um, Basmeen, thank you for that. I'm, I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. I see Jessica nodding as you describe those different routes. It sounds like this this is a route that that did go away, this well, closest one to her. Actually, the Hoodie Mount went away in 2009. Oh, and okay. so we've been without service on that corridor for quite a long time, and it was just a very low ridership at, at that time. So we talked a little bit about some of the places where service no longer exists. And let me tell you what we've put in its place. Almost all of our Missouri routes now operate more frequently. We have 35 routes that run at least every 30 minutes. They used to run every 30 or 60 minutes. And then we have 10 routes that operate at least every 15 minutes. 
Those 10 routes on a daily basis carry more than half of Metro bus customers. So that's a huge investment in frequency. And, and Mitch mentioned that he uses one of those routes today. So Bosmin, in your neighborhood, we have the 95 Kings Highway. That's one of those frequent routes. Now it runs every 15 minutes. You may be close to the 16 city limits, which is another frequent route. That, that Those are both north-south routes. And then the 13 Union, that's one of our local routes. That's operating every 30 minutes today. So we're really trying to get these routes on this predictable 15, 30-minute schedule for some of our less traveled routes there on a, a 60-minute schedule, like in the middle of the day or late at night or early in the morning. Give us a try, boss. I mean, try one of those frequent routes. You'll find, I think, that the wait time, the reduction in wait time really makes a big impact on reducing your total travel time. Mitch, did you want to hop in there? Yeah, and I want to uh, uh, speak to that same issue. So obviously in St. Louis, the big thing we are thinking about is equity. Um, we talk about it a lot. And one of the problems with Metro Reimagining, especially on the north side, was uh, there was a long process of discussions and, and meetings, and I came to some of those, and I spoke. And to make a good transit system, we have to have a network. We have to be able to go north-south and east-west. And we lost the number four being a frequent line. That runs along Natural Bridge. So now we have frequent lines that run north and south. That's important. But we cut out that part of the plan where you could get frequently uh, east and west in North City. Uh, that's where a lot of people who rely on transit every day live. And so I think um, that's something that we should really reconsider putting back in as a frequent line. Okay. Um, I wanted to thank Basmine for her call. We've got another caller. That's Corey calling from Chesterfield. Hi, you're on St. Louis on the Air. Uh, I teach an adult education class uh, and we're located at uh, 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 Crevecore Road in Olive, and I have a student who takes the bus home from there, and he's had a terrible time <laughs> since you changed the routes. Um, he takes the uh, bus from uh, the uh, Crevecore and Olive along, he takes it along Olive to the Hanley Station, and he now has to wait an hour at the Hanley Station for another bus to take him north to Hazelwood. And so uh, he doesn't get home until he leaves about 3 o'clock. He doesn't get home till 6 o'clock. Oh and the reason is, is the problem is at the Hanley Olive Station. Um, so I don't know. He, I, I think he's under the impression that you cut out some buses uh, going north from there uh, in his, the direction he needs to go. Um, Corey, thank, thank you for bringing that situation to our attention. Um, Jessica, is this something where they might want to call this this line, or do you have some specific insight into this problem? So without knowing where the customer is going, I don't have specific insight into the route, but it sounds like this might be a place where we're missing a connection at our North Hanley Transit Center. Corey, if you would have your student give us a call in customer service at 314 314- Two three one two three four five. We would like to hear from him so that we understand his trip and can pinpoint a misconnection if that's what's happening. And thank you for that call, Corey. We're almost out of time. Just one last quick question for DeAndre, uh, yes. speaking as citizens of modern transit. What do you think has been missing in our region's conversation about transit overall? Ooh, that is a great question. So actually, I would say the economic impact of transit. So we actually just commissioned a study through Citizens for Modern Transit, the results of which were presented to the board of directors for our organization yesterday and will be released publicly at an event coming up shortly. You can go to the CMT website to, to find that information. But transit brings in, based on this study, three point, over $3.5 billion to Missouri as a whole, most of which stays in St. Louis. That conversation is not being had, thus why we see what is it, 0.02% of Metro's budget coming from the legislature. And as Mitch pointed out earlier, we could use some more state funding we on this. We absolutely could. So unfortunately, we're out of time today. I want to thank all of our guests, Jessica Mefford-Miller, DeAndre Braddix, and Mitch Eagles. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you, Sarah. Thank you. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com.